Hey guys, it's James from Who Shot the Photographer again, and today we're going to be going through three more photos. Um, this is from a recent shoot I did with a girl called Paige. Paige is awesome. She's a cosplayer from Canberra in Australia, and her Facebook page is Fra Flash Frost Cosplay. Um, I'll put a link up for it anyway, but you should go and check it out because she's absolutely so awesome, so talented. Um, cool, so today we've got these three photos here, and we had a really awesome kimono style shoot for this. So I'll be going through these photos and how I edit them. Um, as usual, at the end of the video, if you guys have got any comments or anything you want to leave, go for it. Um, and if you guys want to see me do any more photos, um, please, please let me know. So, we'll start off by using the preset I always use, which is the C400H plus one, which is in the Visco pack, pack six. Uh, love it. I use it a lot of the photos. So, yeah, again, it starts off with these really, really nice colors. First thing we're going to do is get rid of the grain. Because some people like using the grain, and that's really cool, because um, it does have that really filmatic effect, but um, it's not for me so much. I, I, I like to kind of have things nice and crisp and clean. So, reducing the highlights and pushing the blacks up just a little bit, not too much though. Um, might just see, might just bring the shadows up a bit as well. We want to reduce the tint, make it a little bit greener, just to pull it down to the green side. And we're gonna get, use the clarity a little bit. And then onto my favorite part, which is of course, editing the main colors. So there's quite a lot of red in this, so I'm gonna try and really pull that down because I like to desaturate quite heavily. I think that's a little bit too much. Yeah, about there, that's, that's pretty good. And I just wanna bring that a little bit more towards the orange side. It looks really good, that's perfect. So what I wanna do is then reduce the orange. Orange is good because it usually plays on the skin tones as well. Like you'll notice then the skin tones really went, um, really kind of decreased quite a lot then. I don't usually play around with the hue because I feel that this orange has been curated to kind of really fit um, at least Caucasian skin color really, really well. Uh, I am looking at actually trying to create a preset which deals with different skin colors in people because it's something I've heard back that it's a common problem people seem to have sometimes, which is really interesting because I would have never um, Percy picked up on that, but it's obviously um, the power of having feedback from you guys. It's always so interesting. Um, and we're just going to have a look and see what colors we can also reduce here. So the yellow, yellow seems quite prominent in a lot of photos outside, but not in this one as such. Now green, not that teal. The blue, there's a little bit of blue registering here. Oh, we can see it picks up on Paige's outfit there. So I'm just going to reduce that just a little bit just to get that look, that's perfect. And again, I'm using the histogram up here to kind of get a good, a kind of good understanding read of that, of kind of where these colors play, um, which is always a really good indicator. It's not always completely correct, but it does give a really good indication as to what's going on. So I'm happy with that, I think it looks really cool. What we're gonna do is also reduce the saturation a little bit. Maybe about there, that looks right. That's pretty good. I'm gonna enable profile corrections because uh, just to kind of reduce the distortion. Obviously it blows out, so we're just gonna pull that right back. About there, that's perfect. Now, another thing I like to do as well is just to make sure um, that we kind of get some of the details really sharpened up. So for example, Paige has these absolutely stunning eyes here. So what we're gonna do is just sharpen these up a little bit. Um, and it's nothing big. I used to do a lot of Photoshop work. Um, and with that, it's very kind of heavy. And I have the utmost respect for photographers who still use that. And don't get me wrong, I'll still use it from time to time as well. But when you get the power of very subtle changes like this, I'm gonna just get rid of that one because that's a bit too thick. Um, you really can make such a difference. And it's just small details. So I'm not going crazy and it's just very, very, very small details. And another tool, and this, this is a really good, this old set of tools is absolutely awesome. Next thing we're gonna do is just do a little bit of an iris enhancement like that. And again, when you do this, you just wanna make sure that it's not going too over the top as well, because sometimes you'll do this and then you'll realize that, you know, someone's eye looks absolutely just, it just looks a little bit too uh, too obvious and you don't wanna do it. You want it to look kind of quite natural. I feel that um, this is probably gonna be a pretty good level. And there I use a teeth whitening. Now teeth whitening on irises is incredible because it really does, bring it out there. Um, and another thing we're also gonna do is use the clone stamp tool. Um, 
Now my Mac sometimes plays up, so hopefully it's not gonna muck us around. But this is another great tool for you guys if you're looking to work out how to um, just fix minor things. This isn't, you know, huge, but there we go. Now we've got rid of that loose hair strand there, which is just really great, really, really easy tool to use, and that's fantastic. Um, and I think, I think we're nearly there actually, guys. I think I'm pretty happy with that. What I'll do is I'll just see how that compared to the original, because that's always really interesting. Um, because it's, so look. So I've just moved that about a bit. It's more or less the same one though, which is really interesting. Yeah, again, when I do this, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes there is a change, but usually consistency and stuff like that, you will usually have the same effect. So now move on to this next one. I absolutely, I love this photo. I think this is really cool. So first thing that strikes out to me is I just want to get the, uh, I just want to get it looking a little bit straighter because it was shot, I shot this a little bit wonky and I'm just trying to get the lines here to at least look a little bit more, look a little bit better. So what we'll do first is we'll go and apply the preset. Now obviously it looks a little bit too warm. So what we're going to do first is get rid of the grain and we're going to use the color dropper to get the color of white here. Uh, this is a great little tool. It's really good and it helps just balance the photo. And then what it does is basically sets everything along this kind of color as, as white. Now for this as well, there's quite a lot of darkness down here and I'm not such a big fan of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the usual profile correction. That looks really good because it's, I think because of the style of having all this white and it being very kind of black and white in that contrast, we're going to leave that. I might just put it in just a little bit. But that looks fantastic. So what we'll do is, I'm pretty happy with the exposure there as well. Uh, what we're going to do is just pull the highlights down a bit. Do that and just, now I want to get that really nice deep contrast. So I'm probably not going to muck around with the blacks in that to be honest. Um, what we're going to do is get the clarity brought down as well. The reason why I bring down clarity is just to bring a little bit of softness to the photo. Um, it really helps just to kind of, just to soften the features, I guess. Um, obviously this isn't a very kind of close up photo, but um, it does kind of lend this ethereal view to the whole uh, photo, which I like. So we're gonna see what reds is in here. I don't think there's really a lot of red. Orange will reduce anyway, because I've got a feeling that Paige's skin is gonna be affected like that. There we go. And yeah, again, it's funny because this is this, is this beautiful, fantastic uh, kimono, uh, which was sent by um, one of her friends, Annalisa, uh, from Scarlet Moth Cosplay. I'm really impressed with myself getting all these names right. I'm, I'm trying as hard as I can. Um, the beautiful, beautiful kimono, absolutely fantastic. And obviously I think the style we're going for is this kind of very geisha look. And it has, obviously geishas are very well renowned for their uh, white, very pure white makeup. So I think in this case, it's actually kind of really helping that whole look. So I'm just gonna reduce the yellow a bit. There's not really a lot of other colors in this. So what I'm going to do is just pull that down a little bit. That looks nice, that's good. I don't think we have anything to edit there as well. And I think, that's so what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna reduce the contrast just a little bit. And I hope that through seeing these videos, people will start to see that a lot of the way in which the way I shoot photos isn't necessarily about all fixing everything in post-production um, because there's nothing worse, and I think I've said it before, there's nothing worse than kind of taking your shoot, just blowing through it, and then coming out the end of, other end and finding that you've actually got to spend seven hours in Photoshop. Um, I've had to do it before and it's just, it, it's really, it's not worth it guys. Get it right on the day and uh, it'll help you in payback will be in spades it'd be awesome i think i'm really happy with that i think that looks really really awesome uh, let's just have a quick check as to how it originally looked just to see what i've actually done differently oh uh, yeah i did a little bit of a crop on that previously as well because i like to play uh, by the rule of thirds so i like to make sure that page is in about the third of that and i'd say that was more towards what i originally um output as well I'd say maybe just a little bit more blacks, but that's it basically right there. I'm, I'm happy. I'm going to leave that because that looks really, really cool. I love that contrast. It's, it's absolutely stunning. 
And now uh, this is a photo I know Paige really likes, so I thought I'd uh, do her the honor of actually editing it live. Uh, this was an interesting day when we shot this. It was very sunny, and I used to be of the thought uh, back in the day when I did wildlife photography that having loads of light was the best thing ever. And uh, it, for portrait photography, it definitely provides a bit more of a challenge. And the reason for that is because you get this, this incredible, incredibly bright light here, but then you can get these incredibly intense shadows, which really skew the way uh, the light is portrayed in the subject. And it can be a bit of a nightmare to try and level everything out, um, which is why I now prefer to shoot kind of in the shade. And with this, we have the sun knocking around back there, shining onto Paige's left side of the face, as you can see. And I have Paige turn a bit more towards me. Uh, and the reason for that is just, yet again, just to kind of really, uh, kind of really shield her face and kind of make everything a little bit more normal, a bit more balanced. So we're going to reduce the highlights, increase the blacks. Now, also on a sunny day as well, I will just pop the shadows up a bit because it helps just, just normalize it a bit. And I might even pop up the contrast. Just that's too much. Just a little bit, maybe one. It's ever so small of a kick. It's not even a big thing. I just want to get the tint in there. And of course, I, I want to get rid of the grain. And we'll do profile correction as well. Now, as you can see, it, lo it looks absolutely awesome. Um, and with photos like this, I really like to kind of get a really nice, kind of get an atmosphere in the photo. It's, it's a really important thing. And I can tell the rest of this is really light. And I feel that if I had too much vignetting, uh, it would really detract from this overall kind of lightness in the photo. So the next big thing we want to do is reduce all of the colors. Now the big one I can see here, I can just see so much orange in this photo. Um, and we could deal with that by possibly reducing the temperature a bit. But I think that this is mainly due to the kind of the heat of the sun and the light of the sun. So I think for this we're going to be reducing it using this. So here we go. I reckon, I reckon minus 30 was about right. That's great. Now we want to have that. Just to drop those yellows, of which are quite a few. And also you find that global saturation in this kind of area will help a lot as well. I want to really get those blues desaturated. That's nice, that's really good. Now I think, Paige has these stunning eyes. I think they might be showing up as green. No, not so much. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll leave that alone. We'll leave the green alone. What I'll do next time is I'll do a forest theme shoot because I absolutely love playing around with um, the greens and I love having these really rich greens in a lot of the photos I do. And uh, hopefully that will show up a bit more. So we won't change that actually. I'm quite happy with the color of blue there. So what we'll do is reduce the clarity a bit as well. Now you saw there it just brought in that halo there. If I just show you that again, because that that's what we want to get. It's just that little bit of an ethereal feel. It's nothing going crazy like that because that just looks, in my opinion, absolutely terrible. Uh, we want to go for something very, very subtle. It's it's ever so subtle. There we go. So I want to bring down the clarity of it, uh, saturation rather. That's beautiful. And now we just want to work on Paige's eyes again. And what we'll start is we'll start with just a basic sharpen, just to bring out the brow, get to get her brow game on point. Um, and yeah, again, Paige did incredible makeup. And I love working with makeup artists. Uh, they're incredibly talented people and just the way they create and uh, really uh, do so much incredible, incredibly creative work. Whoops, I just totally mucked up when I have a new brush. Uh, yeah, just the way they do, they, they work it just, I actually love watching it, hey? Because I can do this stuff till the cows come home, but I really, uh, if you ask me to paint someone's face, you can probably end up with some kind of uh, kiss thing where uh, you've got like a dog in black and white that that's that's fine for me uh, but anything else uh, I think you're gonna have a you're gonna be a little bit disappointed if I'm honest so let's just change that to iris enhance again yeah, Photoshop um, and Lightroom really are such incredible tools I know with this series we're talking about using Lightroom but um Photoshop is another really incredible piece of software and yeah again it just depends on what you want to use. I've used Photoshop a lot before. In some of the earlier shoots I did, I used Photoshop um, an awful lot. Uh, whereas now I do typically just use Lightroom. So let's just have a quick final look at this. Yep, 
I'm, I'm really happy with that. I think that looks really, really awesome. Uh, Paige was so much fun to work with. Please go and check out her stuff. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with that, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions of what you want me to edit next, if you have a look at my recent work on my website, uh, or are there any kind of photos or tricks uh, you want to know about how it kind of developed, let me know in the comments below. And I'm always listening. I'll always get, get something done for you guys. So, um, yeah, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, there'll be more coming out soon, and I'll speak to you guys later. Thanks very much indeed for watching. Cheers, guys.